Hello, I've been doing a few videos recently using the R9 system, mostly because somebody asked me about attaching SmartBook telemetry. So I've been using this quad with the R9 and putting a GPS in it and all sorts. And it's been a while since I did some R9 videos. And back when it first came out, I was going through it and doing sort of testing. And you know, I didn't like the RSSI and I was checking out different antennas like the Super 8, which works quite well. And I sort of was holding back because what happened is I was talking to FreeSky and FreeSky said, oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna release a wireless update, a bit like how the TBS one works. And I thought, I'm gonna wait around for that. But meanwhile, they, they haven't done it. And I thought I could keep waiting or I could just have a mess around and try out the new firmware. So I decided I would get the Flex firmware on this, uh, on this module and of course update it on one of my R9MM receivers. Uh, and I thought I'd go through how I did that and what I found out about how it flew and if it was particularly different to the previous one. The Flex firmware needs OpenTX 223, I only had 222. This is no hassle, you just go to the OpenTX companion and you say download. One thing you need to make sure is you have the Flex 9M option clicked. If you go into your preference panel and look at this dialog here you can see you've got this flex r9m and you just need to make sure you have that ticked this uh was a stumbling block last time because uh 223 was beta but now it's proper code and you can just go and get it obviously back everything up first before you upgrade anything so then i went and got the latest flex firmware this is on the r9 module you can see it hasn't been updated since february but you know that's the latest version so we went and got that and then we went to the R9MM page, and again, the firmware is back in February, but uh, that was easy enough to get hold of. Now, after making all the videos, literally just a few days after I'd, I'd done this, I'd finally bit the bullet, I went back to that page and I noticed they had the Access firmware there, which was kind of annoying. Access is FreeSky's new super duper improved system and you've, you've probably heard a bit of controversy on it from some of their new radios which weren't initially supporting the old stuff but the key features of Access is things like wireless binding and wireless firmware updates uh, and I got a little bit annoyed because I thought damn it I've missed the whole wireless update thing by a, like a few days and uh, although the firmware for the R9 M wasn't available on that download page it's available directly from here but what I've since found out is I, I don't think they're supporting this yet for OpenTX so I haven't missed it but it's close by so at some point I'll be dragging all this out again to update it and try access out but for now back to what I did next on the R9 first up flash the R9 module which is the easy part of it it's just a case of saying flash the external module having put the firmware on the radio and having the module plugged in that's uh, all very smooth and easy it will just take a while next up it was time to flash the r9mm this is a little bit more hassle because i basically had the desolder from the quad sold on some wires so i could put them in the back of the radio and do the actual flash there um, again, pretty easy stuff still, it's just a bit of a pain. If you're unclear how to do this, I've got a bunch of videos on how to flash receivers and it's the same as doing any 2.4 receiver with um, an S port. You just plug it in, you get your firmware connected, you say flash external device and it will start flashing away to say it's doing it. So once you have the firmware on your radio and the firmware updated on your receiver and your module, you'll have some slight differences when you actually go into the options there. Obviously you'll need to rebind it and when you rebind that is the option to have telemetry off or on and the difference now is you can have telemetry on irrespective of your power. You can also change between um, 915 and 868 obviously you know stay legal for your country because you will find you will be wrecking like phone networks and stuff. At that point what you've got, and I've, I've bound this with uh, telemetry on, you've got completely different RF power. Instead of just as this was 25, 100 or 500, you've now got 10, 100, 500, and it says auto less than one watt. You can probably hear that buzzing because there's no quad here, so it's ramped the power right up. But what that auto mode means is it will start low, 
hopefully at 10 milliwatts, and then it will ramp up the power as it goes. So when you set it to one watt now, it doesn't mean one watt, it just means it will go up that high, which I think uh, is quite nifty. It's a little bit like the crossfire system there. The crucial thing is as you change power, you don't need to rebind. Previously you did, and that was a right pain, but now you can change power to your heart's content and uh, do what you like. So let's go fly it. All right, so I've got GPS on this quad and I've got the R9 in flex. I'm gonna start on 10 milliwatts, put it up to 100, and then try it on the, the actual flex thing on up to one watt and see what happens. So this is my 10 milliwatt flight, and this is a bit of a cock up. That intro you had there was from the previous day, and what happened is I'd managed to not record a couple of my flights, including the one on 10 milliwatts. So I came out the next day and did it again. So I was a bit more confident on the second day about how it works and um, and, and what I was doing. And uh, I've got the GPS on the quad and I'd, I'd already tested the whole GPS rescue mode and stuff, so it was all good. Still a little bit frightening going out on 10 milliwatts though. And you can see that the RSSI value still drops off like a bit of a stone. And what I've sort of come to my conclusion is unlike your 2.4 receiver where at around 40% it starts getting critical and anything sort of on 30% you've already fallen onto the floor. It seems on these that you can pretty much fly them down to zero and you've only got a problem when you actually lose signal completely. Uh, which is a bit weird, it, it takes some getting used to and I've, I've gone back to using channel 16 uh, as RSSI instead of using the telemetry because of course as you go further away the telemetry signal might not make it back but you can see here that you know I've I've decided to try and do like a kilometer flight on all of these and see how it does but and it's all fine going out but take a look when we turn around and see what happens here look at the RSI value and it drops off to nothing you see that little little flicker on the quad there was just the start of a stage one fail safe so i just felt the quad lose control just for a split second and then kind of snap back as it got control again so yeah i mean i wouldn't really fly on 10 milliwatts to be fair anytime ever but it sort of demonstrates that at low power at you know a relatively low altitude we were doing okay but at this point it seems like your antenna can easily be blocked by uh, your quad or your model or whatever and that will potentially wipe you out there. So I'm flicking over here and this is on 100 milliwatts and this is from the day before and you can kind of see that my confidence level wasn't as high because as soon as I get a slight flicker in a video I'm like quick get some height. So I end up being over there at like 100 meters but it's really weird because the RSSI was already like lower it went down to 30 going out but it stayed there as I as I went on the turn so the missing test I have is the 500 milliwatt level which I decided not to do because what I what I decided to do is go back and say put it on one watt because on one watt of power you're not actually putting out one watt this is kind of what the flex thing is it should be starting at 10 milliwatts and ramping up the power as it goes. And I wanted to see if the RSSI would sort of drop off and then come up again. So again, same test, and I'm, I'm looking at the RSSI and I see it sort of going down and then going up again. And I don't know if this means that the power is starting to ramp up. I can't hear any sort of buzzing or anything from the module that I had last time. But you see there, it went down in the 50s, and then it's going back up into the 70s, close to the 80s. I'm trying to detect if there's um, a, a sort of criteria for it ramping up the power. But generally speaking, we seem to have a fairly good signal out here. And we're not very high. We're just I, I'm just having to clear the treetops, else I'd block my uh, VTX antenna a little bit. You see it's starting to creep in a little bit of interference there but th the only problem is I don't know what power I'm on you can see that the RSSI signal is pretty good it's it's kept dropping down and then it kept bringing back up again and at the end of this run here I'm starting to get sort of sparkles in the RSS, um, in the VTX and on the turn it was still dropping just into the 40s there but overall a much stronger signal so uh, I'm I'm happier with it. So yeah, in conclusion there, it's like RSSI is still weird, 
but the the actual link seems pretty nice I can't really complain about that bit so that is uh, I say it's much improved it, it's sort of a little bit samey in terms of the RSSI is a little bit weird and um, as I said last time despite the really curious RSSI I had I, I didn't actually have any fail safes and uh, same this time pretty strong signal I should state that in all these tests I'm just using the R9M module on my Tyrannus X9D with the Super 8 antenna and obviously as I mentioned before the, the nice thing about Flex is we don't have to go and rebind the receiver every time we change the power we can just get on with it which is really nice anyway that's my video for today um, any questions comments leave them down below of course I shall be following up when access looks like it's ready uh, just to see what that's like just so I can do things wirelessly uh, but for now, thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.